Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Physiology Learning. I am Dr. Ram. In today's discussion, we are going to see about thalamus. We are discussing our sensory system in the CNS lecture under which thalamus is being discussed today. Thalamus, uh, when we hear the word, we all of us know that it is the relay station. Since it receives all the sensory information from the body, we are discussing it under the sensory system. So let's dive into the topic. So the learning objective for today is we are going to understand different thalamic nuclear divisions. The divisions of thalamus is very vast and as well as it is very very important. We are going to discuss about them and functions of the thalamus. We are going to discuss the functions of thalamus as a whole and the individual nuclear division wise. So let's see what is thalamus. Thalamus is a part of diencephalon. In diencephalon, a group of nuclei or the gray matter forms the thalamus. This thalamus is a ovoid structure made up of a group of nuclei. The thalamus looks like this and it is located on both the sides and it is also rightly called as a sensory relay station. It carries and receives information of all the sensation except for one sensation that is olfaction. So this exception has been asked in MCQs. So if a question is asked all sensation relay in the thalamus except go for olfaction. But even though the recent study says that even olfaction passes through the thalamus. But still for our MCQs, we are going to go for olfaction only. Then it also participates in receiving the sensory information and helps in motor functions as well as limbic functions. This limbic function we will discuss further and it is rightly called as the gateway of cerebral cortex. Many information comes and goes through via the thalamus. It not only gives impulses to the cerebral cortex, but at the same time, it also receives information from the cerebral cortex. So it is a to and fro connection, like both sides it is connected. All the thalamic nuclei are excitatory except for the thalamic reticular nuclei. Again, this is an MCQ because this is again an exemption. This is the only nuclei which is inhibitory. And one more thing about this thalamic reticular nuclei is it does not go out of the thalamus. It forms intrathalamic connections and the neurotransmitter that is released here is GABA whereas the excitatory neurotransmitter which is the most common excitatory neurotransmitter in the whole of CNS yes it is glutamate so glutamate is released in all of them now coming to the thalamic nuclear divisions the thalamic nuclear division is primarily divided into three divisions here we can see here there is a y-shaped structure in the middle it is formed of axons, white axons. They divide the thalamic nuclear structure into three different regions or three different parts. The frontmost one that is called as the anterior division or the anterior part. And here we have on the medially, here we have the medial part and on the lateral side we have the lateral part. So the primary divisions of thalamic nucleus anterior part, medial part and lateral part. And Thalamus is further divided into many nuclei. So coming to the anterior part, it is very easy to remember. Let us start with it. The anterior part has only the anterior nuclei. It is very simple to remember. Then coming to the medial part, the medial part has only two divisions. That is the medial dorsal and medial ventral. Coming to the lateral part, which is very very important. At the same time, it is difficult to remember. It has multiple divisions. The lateral part is further divided into as you can see here, the dorsal tire, that is the dorsal group of neurons in the lateral group and the ventral tire, that is the ventral group of neurons in the lateral group. So the dorsal tire neurons include LD is for lateral dorsal, LP is for lateral posterior and one more nuclei that is the pulvinar. So all these three, that is the lateral dorsal, lateral posterior and pulvinar come under the dorsal tire of lateral part. Now coming to the ventral tire, here we have the ventral anterior, ventral lateral and ventral posterior. This ventral posterior is further divided into ventro postero lateral and ventro postero medial. So we are going to discuss all these nuclei in detail. First coming to the anterior part that is the anterior nucleus. In the anterior part we have the biggest nuclei that is the anterior nucleus. This anterior nuclei receives information from the mammillary body of hypothalamus. This is again very very important. This mammillary body of hypothalamus gives its input to the anterior nuclei of thalamus. 
This goes via a specific tract that is called as mammalothalamic tract. And from the anterior nuclei, the output goes to the limbic cortex. This entire connection is a part of a Pape circuit. This Pape circuit we will again read in the limbic system. This limbic system is primarily involved in emotions and memory. So, this part of the thalamus is also involved in emotion and memory. So, the anterior nuclear primary function is emotion and memory through the Pape circuit connections. Now, coming to the medial part, medially we have medial dorsal and medial ventral nuclei. Both of them are involved in certain higher functions like mood and emotional balance. These neurons are involved in creating an emotional balance in the individual. This is also pretty simple. The anterior nuclei is also simple. The medial is also simple. Now, coming to the one which is a little bit difficult one, which has multiple nuclei, that is the lateral part. So, in the lateral part, we have two divisions, that is the dorsal tire as well as the ventral tire. As you can see here, this one side we have given the dorsal tire and the other side is ventral tire. Here, I have not shown the anterior part as well as the medial part because we require much space. This part is divided into dorsal tire as well as the ventral tire. In the dorsal tire, we have the lateral dorsal, lateral posterior and pulvinar. All of them are involved in sensory association. So, all of the nucleus that is the dorsal tire nuclei are involved in sensory association. And this pulvinar is also involved in visual attention. It is also involved in visual attention. Now, coming to the ventral tire of neurons, that is we have the ventral anterior, ventral lateral and ventral posterior. This ventral anterior is particularly involved in cortical recruiting response. So, it recruits so many neural circuits for the cortical responses. So, this ventral anterior is very, very, very essential connection between the cerebral cortex. Now, coming to the ventral lateral nuclei, it is very, very essential for the treatment of essential tremors. The essential tremors which were produced in the patients, whenever this lobe was stimulated, there was reduction in the incidence. So, this is involved in treatment of the essential tremors. And coming to the ventral posterior, we have the ventroposterior lateral and ventroposterior medial. The ventroposterior lateral nucleus, we have already discussed, it receives information from the dorsal column as well as the spinothalamic tract. It receives all the sensory information from dorsal column plus the spinothalamic tract. Whereas the ventroposterior medial, the ventroposterior medial receives the sensation from the facial region via the trigeminal nerve. It also receives the information from the taste sensation. So, both the trigeminal nerve sensation from the face as well as the taste sensation, they go to the ventroposterior medial. And there are two other important nuclei which are located next to the pulvinar, which is a part of metathalamus. That is the medial geniculate body and lateral geniculate body. The medial geniculate body forms the relay station for hearing, whereas the lateral geniculate body forms the relay station for the visual impulses. Lateral geniculate body is for visual impulses. The overall important functions of thalamus that is it acts as a sensory relay station and it also senses the crude degree of tactile sensation. It is not only the cerebral cortex which is involved in sensing the tactile sensation, the thalamus also can detect the tactile sensation. And two other important sensations that is the pain as well as temperature they can be perceived in the thalamus itself. It is not the cerebral cortex which is involved in perception. The cerebral cortex is involved in localization predominantly. In lower animals where the cerebral cortex is not developed, they also feel the pain sensations. That is because they also have a thalamus which is well developed. And this thalamus through the papyrus circuit, it is also involved in memory as well as emotion. Now coming to one important clinical aspect that is thalamic pain syndrome. As we know, most of the pain from fibers are going through the thalamus. So, whenever there is an infarction of the thalamus, initially the pain sensation is completely lost. But what happens during the recovery period? During the recovery period from the thalamic infarct, the patient usually feels a chronic pain on the contralateral side of the body. They feel a severe pain on the contralateral side of the body and this type of pain is called as thalamic pain syndrome. It is also called as post-infarct pain syndrome 
because this usually happens during the recovery phase not immediately after the infarct immediately after the infarct the pain cessation is not going to happen this usually happens in the recovery phase and it is called as thalamic pain syndrome i hope it's clear please revise the thalamic nuclear it is very very important thank you for listening we'll see in the next video thank you so much